Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Hello everyone, welcome back to italianpod101.com. My name is Daisy. Mi chiamo Daisy. Mi chiamo Daisy. And in this video we're gonna talk about tongue twisters. Sciogli lingua. Sciogli lingua. So in Italian it's not really twister, but sciogli, so melt, to melt, sciogliere is to melt, sciogli lingua, so tongue melters, basically, uh, lingua is tongue, lingua, and sciogli. Of course there are many, even uncountable maybe, because people can just make them up, right? In fact, especially kids. But we're going to see together the most famous five of them, or at least the ones that I think are most common. We can all agree on the fact that they don't have a deep meaning, right? <laughs> In fact, they just come from filastrocche, so nursery rhymes or poems or short stories in rhymes, that too. So yeah, don't focus too much on the meaning, but of course on the sound. Trentatré trentini entrarono a Trento, tutti e trentatré trotterellando. So yeah, if you have troubles with the sound tr, this is the one that you have to practice with. Trentatré trentini. Trentini actually means the people that live in Trento. Trento, which is the city in northeast of Italy, almost close to Austria, if you want to have like a reference. Anyway, trentatré trentini entrarono a Trento. So they entered Trento. They arrived in Trento, tutti e trentatré trotterellando. All the 33 of them trotting, <laughs> if you are thinking about a verb that is similar to trotterellando, to waddle. So, you know, kind of jumping happily, <laughs> trotterellando, like a horse. Trentatré trentini entrarono a Trento, tutti e trentatré trotterellando. Trentatré trentini entrarono a Trento, tutti e trentatré trotterellando. 33 inhabitants of Trento entered Trento, all the 33 of them trotting. Doesn't really make sense in English as much as in Italian, because yeah, it's just, I don't know, the start of a story maybe. It's just to practice the sound. Numero due, I really like this one because it's one of the longest, I think, and it has a story. So, Apelle, figlio di Apollo, Apelle, figlio di Apollo, so Apelle, son of Apollo, fece una palla di pelle di pollo. E tutti i pesci vennero a galla per vedere la palla di pelle di pollo fatta da Apelle, figlio di Apollo. Yeah, I was just showing off now. <laughs> Because this is really something that we did, like, when we were kids, saying this endless times, basically. Apelle, figlio di Apollo, so Apollo's son, Apelle, fece una palla di pelle di pollo. Made a ball with chicken skin, pelle is skin and pollo is chicken, and palla is ball. So he made a ball with chicken skin, and all the fish, out of nowhere I know, but all the fish, came to the surface, a float, basically vennero a galla, per vedere, in order to see, la palla di pelle di pollo, so the ball of chicken skin, fatta da Apelle, figlio di Apollo. Made by Apelle, son of Apollo. Apelle, figlio di Apollo, fece una palla di pelle di pollo. Tutti i pesci vennero a galla per vedere la palla di pelle di pollo fatta da pelle, figlio di Apollo. Doesn't have the same charm, slower. Hmm? So yeah, practice this one to impress Italians. Numero tre, don't worry, this one is shorter and easier, but still really famous, probably even more than a pelle, but anyway. Sopra la panca, la capra campa. Sopra la campa, I have problems with this one. <laughs> Sopra la panca, la capra campa. Sotto la panca, la capra crepa. 
sopra la panca, so above, on the bench, panca is bench, the goat, capra is goat, is alive, stays alive, campare is like to survive, keep living, sopra la panca, la capra campa, so on the bench, the goat is alive, survives, under the bench, sotto la panca, la capra crepa. Really sad for la capra, but anyway, under the bench, the goat dies. On the bench, the goat survives. Under the bench, the goat dies. I spent hours thinking of why, like, he or she needed the sun, there was not enough grass, people wouldn't pet them. I don't know, it is just a way of saying. Numero quattro, leaving goats aside, we're talking about fruit, kiwi in particular. So it's sad that some people can't even pronounce this one. I don't know, still haven't met one, but I could see people having troubles with this. Kind of like me with the goat, but anyway. <laughs> Li vuoi quei kiwi? Li vuoi quei kiwi? Do you want those kiwi? Kiwi is plural in Italian. That's why it's those, quei. Vuoi quei kiwi or li vuoi quei kiwi? Do you want those kiwi over there? And if you don't, e se non vuoi quei kiwi, quali kiwi vuoi? And if you don't want those kiwi, which kiwi do you want? E se non vuoi quei kiwi, quali kiwi vuoi? I can see it's hard to say kiwi and then vuoi because it's like the same position but different sound. We and vuoi. <laughs> But yeah, that's about it. Li vuoi quei kiwi? Numero cinque, and it's again about animals, because animals are super popular with tongue twisters, probably because they're made up by and for kids in the beginning. But anyway, tre tigri contro tre tigri. Tre tigri, three tigers, against, contro, versus, Tre tigri, three tigers, three versus three tigers, tre tigri contro tre tigri. Here too I heard some alterations like trenta tre tigri, 33 tigers, because they take the one from Trento, so you know, you can mix them up. And again, it's about the tr sound, which is also the protagonist of the bonus one that I'm gonna tell you. This one was especially used among kids at least when I was a kid, to make fun of kids that couldn't pronounce properly the sound R, R. But eventually maybe this also helps, <laughs> I don't know, but ramarro marrone. Ramarro marrone. Which is an animal, right? Just like that was enough, but there is also the phrase Oh, che orrore! C'è un ramarro marrone sul muro verde. Ramarro is lizard, uh, also lucertola is lizard, but ramarro is a species of lizard, okay? And it's usually green, <laughs> ramarro verde, but there is also a brown one, so ramarro marrone. Oh, che orrore, oh, what, like, this is disgusting, what a uh, horror. Oh, che orrore, c'è un ramarro marrone, there is a brown lizard, there is a brown green lizard <laughs> on a green wall su un muro verde. So yeah, I challenge you to pronounce all of them and tell me which one was the hardest or which one do you particularly enjoy. As I told you, I really like number two and I have troubles with number three. So you tell me yours as well. And extra points if you don't have the R sound in your language, but you can manage to say this sciogli lingua. So thank you for watching. I hope you had fun. And if you haven't done it yet, you can sign up for your free lifetime account on italianpod101.com in order to learn Italian in the fastest, easiest and most fun way possible. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.